Hey there, drone fans. Today I'd like to try and answer your top 10 questions about the brand new DJI Neo drone. Now, I've been flying the Neo ever since it was released, and it's quickly become my favorite drone to take with me pretty much anywhere I go. It's always in the back of my car, just in case I have a little bit of time where I'm not doing something, and I found a beautiful location, and I want to put a drone up and capture some cool footage and just have a lot of fun. It's small, it's affordable, it's incredibly sophisticated, and the best thing about the Neo is the fact that this drone is really four drones in one. It's a selfie drone, which means I can put it in my hand, turn it on, hit a button, and have it automatically fly a pattern around me, or fly away from me, or actually follow me as I walk down the sidewalk. And I can't tell you how impressive that is to somebody who's never flown a drone. If you bring a friend along and you put this in automatic mode or selfie mode, you're gonna look at them and they're gonna be shocked. They're just, they can't believe that a drone can do that. So, great selfie drone. But it's also able to be flown from your phone. So you can open up the application, you'll have virtual joysticks on your phone, and you can fly it sort of like you've got a controller but with virtual joysticks. So it gives you the feel of flying a real drone. But you can also add a controller. So you can add the N3 with your phone or tablet, or you could add the RC2 and fly it like a regular drone. Then, DJI released brand new firmware a couple of months back that actually turned it into an FPV drone where you can use the N3 goggles and the motion controller to fly it like it's an FPV drone. So you're gonna get the full drone experience of having a selfie drone, having a drone you can fly with a full-size controller, or fly that drone as an FPV drone. And that's great if you're thinking of joining the hobby, maybe you're not sure if you're gonna like it or not. So you can start with the Neo, develop the stick skills you'll need to fly bigger and more sophisticated drones, and try out FPV as well. And then you'll know, yeah, I'm an FPV flyer, I'm a camera drone flyer, maybe you're both, but this drone does everything, and that's just pretty cool. So I'm getting ahead of myself here. You can tell I really like this drone a lot. Anyway, let's get started with the questions. So the first question is, why the Neo, right? There's a lot of drones on the market. Why would you pick the Neo? What is this drone designed to do? DJI makes a wide range of different drones. What's up with the Neo? Well, this drone was specifically designed to start off as, I guess, the ultimate selfie drone. It's small, it's portable, it's affordable. It's got a ton of sophistication built in from all the years that DJI has been developing drone technology. It's built into the drone. You've got a stabilized gimbal, you've got prop guards on the outside. It's really intended for you to take along, put it up in the air, and capture some really cool footage if you're on vacation, or maybe it's more spontaneous. Because the challenge is with most drones, and this, this isn't a big deal, but it really is something to consider. Any other drone you're gonna fly, you've gotta open it up, you've gotta power it up, you've gotta power up a controller typically, you've gotta take off, you've gotta frame the shot. By the time you get all that done, if you're at a party, Uncle Frank's already headed for the woods. He's done, he's not gonna hang around for that picture. With this one, turn it on, hit a button, it starts flying. So within 15 or 20 seconds, it's up in the air. It captures really good video as well. So it really is designed as a selfie drone. And I think the problem a lot of people have is they try to compare it to other DJI drones like the Mini Series or the Air Series and the Mavic series, and it's really not designed to compete with those. It's an entirely new category, and there are a lot of drones in this space that are being developed as selfie drones for creators that want to go out and capture some really good footage from a different perspective, but not have to go through all the work to understand how to fly with a controller. So it's really designed as a selfie drone first, but as I mentioned, you can fly it like a regular drone, you can fly it like an FPV drone, you can even fly it from your phone. So that's your first question. Second question is, how does it handle the wind? <laughs> that's a tricky question. This is a really light drone. It's a really small drone. And handling the wind requires mass up in the air. It's gotta have a little bit of ballast so that a strong wind coming along is not gonna move it. Now, I will tell you that it'll handle a fairly strong wind, but if it's a really strong wind, don't put this guy up because it's gonna be a slave to the wind. It's almost like a cat batting around that little uh, that little ball of fuzz. It's gonna get it's gonna move around an awful lot. So you're gonna have to use your judgment there. I know on the website, I think they say it, it can withstand a level five wind. Don't fly it in a level five wind. I promise you that if you put it up, whoop, it's gonna fly this direction if the wind's coming towards you. So just be careful with it. That's all. It's great for those selfie shots, for going on vacation. You got a party in the backyard. It's wonderful for that. But if you're gonna go to the islands where there's a lot of wind and you're flying over the ocean, probably not the right drone for that. So just be cautious with it, okay? It'll handle the wind, but not really strong winds. All right, a lot of people wonder about vertical mode. Um, some of the drones DJI's released recently have a vertical mode where they'll slip, flip the camera or they'll do framing that actually gives you that nine by 16 perspective. This one doesn't flip the camera. It can't flip the camera because the uh, gimbal is mounted on both sides in the front. It can't actually flip the gimbal. What it can do though, they introduced a recent vertical mode which actually changes the cropping to give you that nine by 16 and it does a pretty decent job of it too. So again, it's, it's a small affordable drone. To build that level of sophistication into the drone to do those vertical 
shots, I think is pretty cool. So you can do vertical shots, but it's going to be a cropped image, not actually a flipped image. Uh, can you fly over water? That's another big question a lot of people have asked. You can. The challenge with flying over the water is that underneath here are these two sensors right there, and they're looking for a change in pattern. That way it knows it's moving. It can also tell how far away from the ground it is by bouncing down uh, light down to the bottom. So it's like uh, infrared light down. It's going to bounce at and count the time it took to get back to it, and it knows how far it is from the ground. The trick is that only kicks in under about 30 feet. So normally it's got GPS coordination, which keeps it at a certain height. When you get down closer to the ground under the 30 feet, that's when the VIO kicks in. The problem with VIO is that if it sees a similar pattern, or more importantly, a reflective pattern, it doesn't know what to do with that because it's trying to find the ground. So if you're flying over water, especially still water, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit the water, not realize how high it is, try to lower down a little bit more, hit the water again, try to lower down a little bit more. You can see where this is going. So as it's adjusting, trying to find the ground when it's over water, it's going to end up take a, taking a dunk. So you want to make sure that if you're flying over water, you keep it high enough and keep moving, right? Especially rough water, that's not bad. But uh, still water is a dangerous thing. Snow is also as dangerous and ice is just as dangerous. So just be careful when you're flying to use your head. I mean, it's not, it's not as sophisticated as some of the bigger DJI drones, but I mean, for what you're getting here, it's a pretty amazing drone. All right, the next one is flight time. This has been a big debate out there because I know the specifications are 18 minutes. You have to remember that 18 minutes is in the perfect condition of a test chamber where it's flying with no wind resistance. It's not actually moving that fast. It's not really in automatic mode because everything you turn on with the drone, when you're flying automatically, it's got to use more power. Uh, if you're flying fast, it's going to use more power. If you're fighting a wind, more power. And all that's going to drink electrons out of the battery. So the perfect, uh, perfect conditions, 18 minutes. My real world experience, somewhere between 11 and maybe 13 and 14 if I'm stretching it. And that's with very uh, conservative flying. So you can count on a solid 12 minutes of flight time on each battery. The nice thing is these batteries are easy to change. So bring it back, land it, put a new battery in, put it back up. And if you go with the charging hub, you can actually charge multiple batteries at the same time. For me, I have four batteries. I can fly it, pull a battery out, put it in the charging hub. And by the time that drone drains that second battery, I can pull another battery out. So when I rotate through the batteries, by the time I get to the fourth one, it's fully charged. So I can, I can almost fly indefinitely. So um, just know that you're going to get about 12 minutes on average out of the battery. Uh, indoor crashes. I know a lot of people want to fly it indoors. That's a great place to practice your flying skills. Nothing wrong with flying this indoors. It's got the prop guards on it. Can't cut your fingers. It's going to bounce off the wall. It even protects the camera pretty well in the front. The challenge with flying indoors is you don't have GPS coordination because it doesn't go through your roof. So what you're dealing with indoors is primarily the VIO sensors to keep it horizontal and keep it off the floor a certain height. If you fly in conditions where those VIO sensors can't see the ground well, like a poorly lit area, it could go either way. It could start drifting on you. So make sure when you're flying indoors, you have a well-lit area. And I would recommend that you fly in an area where there's nothing to bump into when you first start. And I can tell you really quickly, when I first started flying drones all those years ago, my first thought was, it's raining outside, let me fly in the house. And what did I do? I put it up in the air, I f it flew right into a corner and completely destroyed some stuff in the corner. I knocked the lamp over as well. So just be careful when you're flying in the house. You'll get good at it and it's a whole lot of fun to fly this through doorways and fly through your living room and under tables and everything else, especially if you're flying FPV. But just be careful that you've got plenty of light in the house so that those VIO sensors can do their job. You're probably wondering why it doesn't have the ability to add a micro SD card to the drone. And that's really a couple of reasons behind that. Number one, the circuitry required to read that is going to drink more energy out of the battery. Plus, you need space for it. You need a slot in the side. And it's a really small drone. Plus, it's, going to, it's a cost factor. I mean, if you add that slot, it seems small. But when you're producing a drone this affordable, you got to kind of cut down on the price as much as possible. But you've got 22 gigabytes of internal storage, which is plenty to record a lot of video footage and a lot of pictures. So, you know, record it, transfer it over your phone, empty out the internal memory, and you're, you're good to go for more flights. So don't worry about that. I've never had a problem exceeding the internal memory. And I'm telling you, I fly this a lot. All right. The next one is, can it follow a car? Well, it's designed to follow people but it won't automatically follow a car. Like in selfie mode, when you're flying from your hand, it'll actually follow you because it's looking for you as a human. But if you want to follow something else, you're going to have to use a controller because with the controller, you can actually draw a box around something that's moving and it'll follow that object. So it's a much more sophisticated flight if you're using a controller. It also improves the range of how far you can fly away because when you're flying with your phone, you're limited to Bluetooth connectivity to it. So that's going to give you, I don't know, maybe 100 feet, 150 feet away, maybe a little longer. Uh, 
I know they spec it longer, but that's probably average. But when you use the controller, it'll go meters, thousands of meters away. So use the controller to follow something that's moving other than a human, or if you want to fly it a little bit further than you can with your phone. And then the last one is the firmware. Uh, DJI is constantly updating their firmware, and I think this is a big plus for them as a company because a lot of companies will release a product like this and just start working on the next version of the product. They don't really care what happens to it after they've released it and sold it to you. DJI is a different kind of company. They're constantly looking at ways they can expand the use case for a product you already own. So when I purchased this product, it showed up, I started flying it. They had it the RC2 controller. I was flying it with the N3, and I thought, boy, it'd be great if they could fly it with the RC2. I use this for most of my drones. Poof, new firmware came out. You can fly it with the RC2. Then I thought, boy, wouldn't it be great if I could fly it as an FPV drone? Sure enough, a couple weeks later, poof, new firmware. The N3 is now compatible. So update the firmware. Don't fear the firmware. If you're one of those people that are really conservative, maybe read, you know, read on the forums for a couple of weeks to see if there are any issues with it. But my experience, and I've been flying DJI drones going way back to the original Phantom series, is that DJI really runs through the testing process on their firmware. They're not going to release something that's got a major issue. I think maybe in those 12 years or 14 years I've been flying them, if it's been that long, um, I don't think I've had issues with any firmware that was anything that was terribly scary. Most of it, the vast majority of it, 99 point whatever percentage of it, I load it on the drone, the new features are there, and I go out and fly and enjoy those new features. So make sure you update the firmware. The last thing I'll say about firmware is sometimes the firmware updates the drone, it updates the controller, it may update the goggles, and it may update the battery. A lot of people miss that, and they'll update the drone at home, they'll have multiple batteries, they haven't touched the batteries, they go out in the field, and it flies great with the battery that was in the drone when you did the update, but the other batteries haven't been updated, because these batteries are intelligent, they've got a controller inside, and you're gonna find that if you pop in one of those batteries that hasn't been updated, you're gonna get a message on your, on your phone or your application saying, firmware needs to be updated, and you're gonna be thinking, I just did that when I left the house, what are you talking about? It's because the the battery hasn't been updated. So always rotate your batteries through the drone when you're doing the firmware upgrades and it'll tell you, yep, there's a firmware update for the battery and it'll do that at the same time. And that's pretty much it for today. Boy, that was a lot. So there's 10 questions answered. Um, I hope you found this review helpful. Uh, again, you can tell that I like this drone an awful lot. It's, it's just a phenomenal product. I've just had nothing but a whole lot of fun with this thing and it's just flown great since the day I got it. And I like it an awful lot and I think you're going to like it as well. So hopefully you found this review helpful. Until next time, <laughs> Happy flying.